Hi everyone, Coldon here with another Vox Immortalis commentary guide. This video is for the Chogol encounter, uh, the final encounter in Bastion of Twilight, and this also shows the normal 10-man version. Uh, we use two tanks and three healers for this fight, and you can see that once we pull Chogol, we move him slightly off-center toward the throne, and then have the rest of the raids stack up behind him. Uh, the reason we stack up is primarily due to the warship ability which he will use every 20 seconds throughout most of the fight and it will cause two random raid members that are not the tank to be charmed and immediately begin channeling an ability that causes them to gain uh, corrupted blood every time it ticks which I'll explain a bit later. Uh, it also causes uh, Chogol to gain a buff that lasts 20 seconds and increases his damage output by 10% per stack so it's important to interrupt both these charm players as fast as possible. Uh, by interrupting them, you stop the channel and therefore break the charm. So to interrupt, you can use any ability that would normally interrupt a player's channeled spell. So you can use normal spell interrupts like Skull Bash or Kick or Pummel. Those work fine, but you can also use abilities that may not work on an NPC that may work on a player in uh, PvP. So you can use things like Fear, or knockback, and those work just fine. So as you can guess, by keeping the raid stacked up tight, it becomes much simpler to actually break people out of the charm uh, very quickly than if we were spread out. Uh, anyway, you see here there's a Corrupting Adherent ad that just spawned. Uh, these spawn every 90 seconds throughout the first phase of the fight, and they come randomly from either teleporter on the left or right. So once one spawns, your uh, current tank that's not on Chogol should pick it up and move it to your designated kill location, which for us is, as you can see, against the wall just to the left of the throne, and then have everyone kill it down. Uh, you need to kill it quickly within under 40 seconds, uh, because once it dies, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a pool of sludge left over, and 40 seconds after the adherent is spawned, uh, Chogol will cast the Fester Blood ability. Uh, this is a two second cast time, and once it completes, it will cause four slime spawns to emerge from the sludge pool that was left over from the adherent's death. So uh, you have to kill it within that 40 seconds to make sure it's, it's dead or it gains a massive AE, I think it is. But once, once the uh, slime spawn, all your ranged DPS need to quickly turn and kill them. Uh, if you have effects such as Typhoon or Elemental Shaman Knockback, those, those work really well. You can also use roots, things like that. Uh, but just try to kill them before they're allowed to melee anyone. If they melee you, they do damage and increase your corrupted blood, which again is bad. Um, as you can imagine though, once the fight progresses, more and more adherents will spawn and therefore more and more pools. And that means the count of slimes every time Fester Blood is cast increases by four each time. So 4, 8, 12, and so on. I think we get 16, I believe, during this fight. So that just makes it harder and harder for ranged DPS to kill them without getting meleeed. So anything you can do. Uh, one key in helping that is that your uh, tank on the adherence needs to position them as close together as possible. Uh, you cannot stand in the actual slime pools there. Uh, so you want to make sure you're on the edge because that will also increase your corrupted blood and do damage. But as close as you can get it, uh, the better, because this will just keep the slime spawns as tightly compact as possible. They also have a few abilities the adherents do. Uh, one is called Corrupting Crash, which is just like any Shadow Crash ability. It prefers random range targets, and once it lands, it does about 45,000 shadow damage in a short AE, and also increases Corrupted Blood. So make sure players watch for that. You can either stay stacked and have everyone move at the same time to avoid it, or just spread out. Uh, just be aware of warship interrupts while you're spread out. Uh, they also, Adherence also cast Depravity, which is 1.5 second cast, but it's interruptible. So make sure you have at least one melee assigned to interrupting those. And if, it allow, if it's allowed to uh, cast, it will do about 20,000 AE shadow damage and around 15 yard range, but also increase Corrupted Blood. So, as you might gather, there's all these abilities that are normally avoidable, but if you don't avoid them properly, you gain Corrupted Blood. 
uh, Corrupted Blood, I'll go ahead and explain now, is indicated by a UI element uh, that's added. It's just a little purple bar. You actually can't see mine. It's sort of hidden behind my grid. Uh, but you can't see the number of the blood on there. I have it slightly modified. It, modified. Uh, essentially, the Corrupted Blood will increase the damage you take during the final phase of the fight, um, the more stacks you have. It goes from zero to 100. It also will have an additional negative effect every 25 uh, blood stack. So at 25, you'll get a, a buff that increases your corrupted blood by one additional uh, point every second, but it's a magic uh, debuff, so it can be dispelled. So if, if anyone's approaching that 25 mark or hits it, you know, make sure you say something so your healers can dispel it quickly. At 50 Corrupted Blood, uh, you'll gain a uh, Sickness buff, Corruption Sickness, that causes you to spit out a cone uh, in five yards in front of you and do shadow damage and increase corruption of anyone that you hit that's a friendly target. And this occurs every 15 seconds once you hit that 50 Corrupted Blood mark. Uh, at 75, uh, corrupted Blood, you gain um, a Corruption Malformation, which is sort of just a, it's supposed to be an attachment uh, that attaches to your body, and all this does is causes uh, Shadow Bolts to be cast on random raid members every two seconds, and these hit for around 25,000 damage. So again, if you hit 75, then it's going to do a lot more damage to the raid, things like that. And then lastly, at 100 Corrupted Blood, you are transformed into an ugly ass creature and you are no longer able to get healed at all but you do 100% more damage and you uh, get a I think instant casts uh, instant spell casts pretty sure that's it uh, so essentially <laughs> more corrupted blood is bad in, in almost every case uh, as I also mentioned it increases the damage you take during the final phase which is from an AE that Cho'Gal will begin using um, that just does 5,000 shadow damage, but each stack of Corrupted Blood increases that damage by 3%. So obviously if you're up to 100, you're gonna take 3% more damage, so that AE is gonna tick really, really hard. So the lower you can keep your Corrupted Blood, the easier the fight becomes once we you enter the final phase. So uh, having said that, there's a couple other things to mention. Cho'Gal has two basic stances that he uses throughout the fight. Um, the first one is Shadow's Orders, and it causes him to cast uh, a raid-wide AE called Unleash Shadows every three seconds. That just hits for 25,000 shadow damage, uh, and it's not too bad. Um, so just have make sure your healers are aware of when that's coming. The other stance he uses is called Flames Orders, and this causes him to gain a debuff, or a buff that increases the damage he does in melee attacks on the tank by adding a 30,000 fire damage hit to every swing. He will also drop uh, little random fire pools around the room, which you've probably seen a lot, so just watch for those. There you can see them landing now. Uh, because they're randomly located, generally they won't hit you if your raid is stacked, but just be aware and you can see there's one right behind him, so the raid has to move out of that. And he will also cast an ability called Fury of Cho'Gal on the current tank. Uh, this is about every 50-55 seconds, and it causes the tank to gain two buffs. Um, the first buff is Cho's Blast, and the second is Gaul's Blast. And combined, they increase the damage the tank takes by 20% from shadow and physical damage. Uh, so you can see there's a cast there. Um, so this is the reason we use two tanks, is because if you obviously use one, that will stack up, and you probably hit will we'll probably hit 60, 80, maybe 100 percent extra damage, which may be healable, but we found it was easier to be steady. So that was all the phase one stuff. We just entered phase two, as you can see, and phase two changes quite a bit. There's no more inherent spawns, no more slimes, stuff like that. Any adherents that were alive will be sort of sucked up. Um, but he does start casting these darkened creations, which spawns these four tentacles. And the tentacles don't have very much health, 
but they will channel an ability on a raid member that increases uh, called debilitating beam and it basically reduces the healing by 75% and their damage by 75 inflicts damage uh, to them as well and this lasts 10 seconds they can be interrupted in things so you can either have your DPS sort of follow one person to get them all killed uh, in order or you can split up so you have uh, more spread out interrupt abilities uh, you can stun them as well so it's up to you how you want to handle it we are this was our first kill we didn't have a lot of practice I think we'd only seen this phase one other time so <laughs> it's very very messy but essentially that's really this phase uh, throughout this phase he's also using the as I sort of mentioned before the corruption of the old god ability which is that 5,000 damage a tick AE that hits everyone in the raid and it also increases your corrupted blood by 1% per, st uh, per tick so if you kind of it's very hard to see but if you look in the middle of my grid um, between the warlock and the shaman there you can see that number 80 81 that's my corrupted blood so I'm very very high and again this is just because we're learning the fight and you know we didn't handle darkened creations very well so they get to channel a lot all that good stuff um, so you can see I have a thing on the back there that's casting shadow bolts at random raid members and I'm gonna hit 100 here pretty soon and be transformed and you can see the, the raid damage is just going up quite exponentially because everyone's corrupted blood is getting higher and higher so this phase is really the burn phase you still need to kill dark and creations quickly and interrupt them to keep your blood down and of course blow all your cooldowns and bloodlust and then just hope you can burn through the phase um, and as you can see we got very very close to losing uh, on this phase but you know now that we've seen it it shouldn't be too much uh, harder in the future so that was the Chogol fight <laughs> uh, thanks for watching uh, good luck have fun